Good evening. Today we are continuing with the Bhagavad Gita. This is chapter 9. Uh, we had stopped at verse 13 and we were discussing about Krishna is talking about his closest devotees. He was saying that there are those great souls who know him. And they know that he is that imperishable, eternal being. And their devotion is single-pointed. So this is where we had ended yesterday. So we'll continue from verse 14 today to get an understanding of who is this Krishna. Krishna has been said to be an enigma, a secret. People really have no clue about him. So who is this Krishna? So we are doing Srimad Bhagavad Gita chapter 9 verse 14 onwards. Constantly chanting my names and glories and striving for my realization and bowing again and again to me, those devotees of firm resolve ever united with me through meditation worship me with single-minded devotion. My Gurudev, Dattatre, has 24 different Gurus. One of them is called the Kitaka, the last one, 24th. It is mentioned that if you, this particular creature that is there, keeps on watching that big creature outside, He's sitting inside this nest and he's watching that big creature outside. He's scared of that big creature. And he keeps on watching that creature constantly. Finally, it so happens that he becomes that creature and comes out of that shell. Now, human beings also follow a similar principle. If you keep on watching your own father, if you are a young boy or a girl, and if you keep on watching your father or your mother, very soon you will have their exact nature. The nature comes to you automatically. It's not necessarily that it has to be a genetic, you know, hand down. It can just be by observation. Likewise, a husband and wife who have been living in harmony for many years start looking and behaving exactly like each other. The one who is the weaker amongst the two starts accepting this stronger personality and they both become equal even their facial expressions and the way they look become the same it is mentioned again by krishna over here that this devotee of mine who keeps on looking at me constantly behaves exactly like a very, very close devotee, a relative of mine, as if he knows me. When he works really hard towards realization of my nature, he bows down to me constantly. He is in love with me. He has a single pointed devotion to me. And he has unconditional love for me. And his resolve is so firm that he keeps on thinking about me 24 bar 7. Such a kind of a devotee who worships me like this with a single pointed devotion merges in me also. He gets this devotion from me. I also would love to be with him. 
Just the way he wants to be with me, I also want to be with him. So we merge like this. There is a very beautiful example even in the other scriptures. Let us say for example the Bhagavatam or the Mahabharata. Now in the Mahabharata there are other characters. In the Bhagavatam there are characters. The characters like Sudama. There are characters like Uddhava. Right? Now Uddhava was literally with Krishna always. And he started looking exactly like him. In many of the scriptures it is mentioned that even the ones who guard the gods, you know like the gods that are there outside, they also start looking like them. When Shivji's entire army went towards where Sati was taking her own life at that time all these you know ghosts and goblins and everybody went there were lots of form people the ones who were there they start most of them were looking like Shankar like Shivji only it is mentioned in these Puranas so this happens and it is something which when you are a devotee of a particular entity you will absorb their tendencies and the way they behave. Likewise, you will find that there are lots of yogis in India. They will start behaving and they work up themselves so well according to their Ishta, whoever that they are following. Those who are the followers of Shiva will grow you know, matted locks of hair. And they behave exactly like that. They will also carry one trishul with them. So this is the way they move around. So, we can move to the next verse. Now, from this verse onwards, he is going to give us an understanding. Krishna is going to give us an understanding about what is it that he is. So let us go step by step. So we are doing the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, verse 15. Others who follow the path of knowledge betake themselves to me through yajna of knowledge, worshipping me in my absolute formless aspect as one with themselves, while still others worship me in my universal form in many ways, taking me to be diverse in multifold celestial forms. So there are two kinds of these people. One who is the Sankhya Yogi. In his case, he follows me by the way of knowledge. He is dissecting me. He is trying to find out who I am. So such a kind of a person, he thinks that I am that unmanifest divinity. Do you remember we were talking about the sovereign secret? Hmm? So he says, I am the unmanifest divinity. So they start taking me as the unmanifest divinity. Now these yogis who are on this path, this is the Advaitic path by the way, they also start behaving exactly like that. You will be amazed to know that. I am not that. They say, I am not that, I am that. These kind of words they keep on using. So if you ask them, are you the body? They will say, I am not the body. I am that. And they are able to sustain themselves even in the coldest of the weather or the worst possible circumstances. They can torture their bodies like nobody's business. They can stay in one place in the cold for a very, very long time. They may not eat for many, many days because they have overcome their body and the mind. And such kind of people who can overcome their body and the mind are these path, people who follow the path of knowledge. They believe they have reached this state of Brahma. 
Don't. The thing which even the Buddhists call is as a state of nothingness. They have reached that stage. So they worship me like that. And then there are those who worship my universal form in many ways. The other kind. The ones who follow the path of karma, the ones who live in this world and believe that I can take any form. So they worship the different forms of mine. Some of them worship me as Padmanabh Swami. Some of them worship me as uh, you know, Shri Hari, somebody worships me as any other, you know, God that you know of. They can consider me as taking any form. And then they worship me like that. So they consider me in many ways, in the universal form of mind, taking me to be diverse in manifold celestial forms. So these are the two kinds that are there. Now we move to verse 16. Now 16, 17, 18 onwards, these verses are going to give you an understanding of what is this Krishna all about. So we will try to take a few words from that and try to understand them. So we are doing Srimad Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, verse 16 onwards. That is, I am the Vedic ritual. I am the sacrifice. I am the offering to the departed. I am the herbage and the food grains. I am the sacred mantra. I am the clarified butter, I am the sacred fire, I am verily the act of offering oblations into the fire. Now is there anything that is not me? Everything is me alone. Let us say we are performing a yagya. We are putting those bricks over there and then we are going to perform the yagya. Who do you think is performing it? It is Krishna himself. Who do you think has become that bricks over there? Krishna himself. Who do you think is the fire inside? Krishna himself. Who do you think is the herbage, the kind of things that we keep on putting in it? The wood that is being offered to it, the different kinds of the uh, stuff that is put in. That is Krishna himself. The oil that goes into it, the oil basically it, it's the ghee that is put inside that. The oily stuff, you know. The ghee that goes inside it. The various kinds of ingredients that go inside. The person who is listening to the mantras. There's a yajman also. There's somebody who is sitting on the other side. For whom these prayers are going on. Then there is somebody who is pouring those things in. So everything is me. So here he is saying this very nicely. Krishna says, is there anything over there which is not me? Please remember the words that he had said. I am the essence in everything. I am the essence in everything. The moment he says, I am the essence in everything, is there anything in this world where his essence is not there? His essence is there in everything. So I am the Vedic ritual. So if you are performing any kind of a Vedic ritual, let us say you are just saying the prayers. You are just reciting the Vedas, the Soktams, or whatever that you, you are doing. Or you are performing certain actions like the sacrifice. If you are performing a sacrifice. Now, when I say sacrifice, I am not just saying that the Brahmins and those people perform sacrifice. I am talking about even you, the one who is a listener. You are also doing your sacrifices. Suppose you are a writer. You are writing. Hmm? Maybe today you will be using your computer or your laptop. At least you are writing. Write something you are doing. You are a painter. You are painting. If you are a connoisseur of a particular kind, let us say food, you are going and tasting the food everywhere. Are you not doing all these things? So whatever work that you are doing, that itself is called the sacrifice. Even the action of eating food. See, when I do this, I am talking about the Indian way of eating food. Maybe you are using a spoon or a chopstick. <laughs> but whatever the way of method of using it, it's okay. It doesn't matter. 
you are still performing what is called as a sacrifice. This is the kund in which you are pouring that, isn't it? Are you not taking the food and putting it in your mouth? Then it is going inside your stomach, in the stomach it is getting churned. So all these is sacrifice. I am the offering to the departed. You see, when we perform this, you know, the ceremony for the departed, not only in India, across the world it is celebrated. Whether you go to the Americas or the China or the Far East or whichever place that you want to go to, you will find that there is a ceremony performed after the death of the passing away of the person. So this kind of a ceremony that is done, it is like offering to the person who is not there. See, think about it. When I tell, told you that you are eating, you are doing that action yourself. At least you have a mouth to eat, correct? So you have a physical mouth to eat. But when the departed, those who are dead, where do they have the mouth, you will say, isn't it? So he says, I am the offering to the departed. These departed souls are offered certain things. Suppose it's the anniversary also. You will offer something to the crows, you know, in India we do that. We put it outside and we say, okay, we hope our forefathers, whoever is lost, whoever is gone, maybe the mother, father, grandfather, grandmother, whoever is passed away, that person will come and eat. We believe like that. So the offering which you are giving them, they come in the subtle form and they have it. And the way they have it, he says, even that which you offer, and the form that they come in is also attributed to me alone. That is Krishna himself. I am the herbage and the food grains. You eat food. Did I not just now tell you that he is everything? So whatever food that you eat, whatever food that is grown in the fields, the green leafy vegetables, the fruits, the flowers, everything that is green in color, all these things, they are the herbage. That is also him. So you can't say that the leaf is not him. That is also him. If you see there is a fruit over there, that is also him. So you will find that all these ingredients that go around, those are him alone. There is nobody else there. So, I am the sacred mantra. So while performing these rituals and rites and the sacrifice, you have to say certain mantras. Those mantras are also me. So you may think those words which are written, you know, Om, so and so, whatever the words are. Do you think that is something else? That mantra is also me. I am the clarified butter. The butter which you pour inside that sacrifice, that is also me. I am the sacred fire, the fire which is lit over there, that is also me. I am verily the act of offering oblations into the fire. Even that act of doing it is me alone. Now when all this is taken into consideration, you will understand this. That all the actions, whether they are done internally or externally, externally in the world outside, or internally in your own stomach, or in your eyes, in your hands, in your legs, everywhere. All these actions, it is nothing but offerings. This is a Vedic ritual. You may wonder, if you say all, the, all these things are Vedic rituals, what makes you think that other things are not? Well, even the creation of a child is also that. It's a Vedic ritual. Hmm. So we move to the next verse. So we are doing chapter 9 from the Bhagavad Gita. Verse 17. I am the sustainer and the ruler of this universe. It's father, mother and grandfather. The one worth knowing, the purifier, the sacred syllable, Om and the three Vedas, Rik, Yajur and Sam. So now he is expanding his scope and he is saying, I am the sustainer and the ruler of this world. As a sustainer, he has taken multiple forms. 
from the form of the first, that is fish, to the boar, to every other form that has come into the picture, right up to Sri Krishna's own form, where he came in as a young boy, hmm? where he was playing around with his friends in Vrindavan. So that is also him. So he says, I am the sustainer and the ruler of this universe. The whole universe is ruled by me. You may think that, oh, there is some other ruler. There is no other ruler. Everybody reports to me. I am the ruler of this universe. It's father, mother and grandfather. The father is me, the mother is also me. So even this mother nature that we spoke of, the Narayana and the Narayani from, <laughs> the one which we came from, the mother nature, the Purusha and the Prakriti is also me alone. So there is no other one besides me. I am the one in everything. The grandfather, the one which came before, the father is there. Before that was the grandfather. Even the grandfather is me. The one who was the one who created this whole thing. That is the Sri Krishna from the Golo Vrindavana. That is also me. The one worth knowing. I am the only one worth knowing. Why do you want to know any other thing in this world? Ask yourself this question. This is a very silly question, you know. We try to understand and know so many things. There are so many controversies, there are so many arguments going on in this world. What are we talking about? Everything is me alone. So don't try to find you know, something else. Just try to know me. That's it. If you know me, then there is nothing to bother you about. I am the one worth knowing, the purifier. The moment you, I touch you, it gets purified. Everything gets purified by my own touch. Krishna is the most purest of all. Worshipping him, you also get the purity. So Krishna's worship is so important and critical for everybody. We have to worship this Lord Krishna alone. Then purification of our being happens. The sacred syllable O. The pranava, the first sound that came into this universe, the first sound which emanated, the omkara, that is also me. And the three Vedas that came out in this world, which is Rik, Yajur and Samaved. All the Vedas, the framework of this creation is me alone. So even if you think they are just some words, don't bother your head about the words. The words are also me. Got it? So we move to the next verse. This is chapter 9 from the Bhagavad Gita, verse 18. I am the supreme goal, the sustainer, lord, witness, abode, refuge, well-wisher, seeking no returns, origin and end, resting place, storehouse of Storehouse to which all beings return at the time of universal destruction and the imperishable seed. So here he is giving an understanding that I am the supreme goal. The final goal is me alone. If you think that there is some other goal, you know, people always think I want to go to the heaven. They think that heaven is the ultimate goal. No. You think that you have to go to Brahmaji or Vishnu or somebody's heaven. You want to go to Vaikunt. Or you want to go to Kailash, you want to go to Brahma's heaven, you want to go to Indra's heaven or some other heaven. No. I am the ultimate goal. That is the ultimate goal is me alone. There is no other ultimate goal. Got it? I am the sustainer of this world. I sustain this whole creation. Whatever that is there is because of me it is sustained. I am the one single thread which sustains the whole worlds around. I am the Lord. I am the great Lord of this whole world. I am the witness. I just keep on watching. I don't interfere in anything. This is the truth which you should know. And I have said this before also. Last, yesterday also I said the same thing. Krishna doesn't interfere in anything. He just watches. He is just a witness. All the job is done by his Maya. 
the divine potency. She is the one who is the one who does everything, right? From creation to destruction, that is her job. That is not Krishna's job. Krishna just watches. Maya knows what he wants or what he is thinking of. And Maya does what is necessary because there are all the laws that are there which are written in the Vedas. She has them on the fingertips. She knows exactly what she is supposed to do for him. And she does accordingly. So, I am the abode. We have already done that. I am the final abode of anybody. The second divine unmanifest is also called as the abode. I am the supreme person. I am the final abode. The refuge. Everybody takes refuge from me. They come to me for anything. All the gods, the goddesses, this whole world, this universe, everything is under my refuge. Chhatra Chaya we call it. Everything I am controlling. I am the one whom they finally will come to. The storehouse. The origin and end. Sorry. Well-wisher seeking no return. I am your well-wisher. Now this is something which you should know. Krishna always tells these words. I am the well-wisher. I will never wish anything bad to anybody in this world. Krishna never has any ill thoughts or bad thoughts about anybody. He doesn't wish that the other person die. He doesn't wish anything ill. He is always the well-wisher. And when he wishes well to anybody, he doesn't take anything from anybody. No. He doesn't say you have to give me this or you have to give me that. All the other gods are sitting in this universe and they are wanting something or the other. See, they are themselves having a, a certain thing lacking. You will find you can take any god for that matter. That god is lacking something. If you take Saraswati, she is the one who gives the knowledge. But does she have any other thing besides knowledge? No. She doesn't have the money. She doesn't have the power to fight. She doesn't go out and win wars like Kali. No. She doesn't do any of those things. So then who is she? She has got knowledge as the base. So they all go to Krishna. And then they say that we want to be with you so that you can provide us with everything. So finally, when Krishna gives them whatever they wish to, Krishna doesn't ask for anything. All these gods will ask for everything. Origin and end. I am the beginning and the end of everything. The resting place. Everything finally comes to rest at me. Storehouse. The place where everything comes to rest. Naturally, there is going to be a storehouse. It's a good home. <laughs> so finally, when everything, the whole universe collapses into something, that place where it's like a godown of Sri Krishna. The whole universe is there, blocked in the garage of his. To which all beings return to at the time of universal destruction and the imperishable seed. And for the next generation, for the next coming, I bring out all the seeds. Everything is rest, resting in a seed format over there. So when the new you know, creation happens, they take it from there. So all the seeds are collected from there and planted in this creation. And then everything comes out from there. So we move to verse 19 now. So we are doing Srimad Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, verse 19. I radiate heat as the sun and hold back as well as send forth showers. Arjuna, I am immortality as well as death. Even so, I am being and also non-being. This is very strange, isn't it? I am being and non-being also. <laughs> I radiate heat as the sun. The sun radiates heat. You know, our sun radiates heat. There is the burning of the gases. I am the one who is the sun also. I am also the sun god, by the way. The one who is radiating heat is also me. The heat is also me. The where it falls is also me. And I don't hold back as well. I send forth showers. When the world is parched, it doesn't have water. I will send water down as cloud. 
So I am even that cloud which sends the water down. So the one who burns the water up into water vapor is also me. The water which goes up and becomes a cloud is also me. The water which comes down and forms the rivers, the lakes, the va everything that is ha happening around, that is also me. Hmm? Arjuna, I am immortality as well as death. So, if you consider immortality, I am immortal. And I am the one who gives the death sentences also. So, for which I have my people with me. The one, the gods which are, which are in charge of taking lives. Like Shiva is there. His department is destruction. So he handles that department. So even that is with me only. So even so I am being and also non-being. Being means the one which is there. The one I am a being, a human being as we say. No, That means you are there. Be means he, there. Is. Hmm? So I am there. It is there, there, is. The being. And there is something which is not being also. I don't know where it is. I don't know. I am not seen. I can't understand. That can't understand and understand is also me. Understood? So, if you think it is a manifest form, that is me. The unmanifest is also me. Unmanifest cannot be understood by any attributes. Like say for example, I can see with my eyes, I can see a form with my eyes, that is the being. But when there is a non-being, can I see, can I understand? What faculty can I use to understand the non-being? That is why Brahma cannot be understood. Understood? So we move to verse 20 now. So we are doing the Srimad Bhagavad Gita chapter 9 verse 20. Those who perform actions with some interested motive are laid down in these three Vedas and drink the sap of the Soma plant and have thus been purged of sin. Worshipping me through sacrifices, seek access to heaven, attain Indra's paradise as the result of their virtuous deed. They enjoy the celestial pleasures of gods in heaven. So now he is talking about some people. Those who perform action with some interested motive. How many people do action with interested motive? I think everybody does. Everybody has some motive in their life. I was just now listening to what the big corporations are doing. The corporations are taking data from everywhere. They are collating it. They are collecting this data. They are analyzing it. And then they are saying that we will give this data to you so that you can do better businesses, better farming, better this, better that, whatever better. How do you do it? For which we will provide you the tools. The tools which are provided, you have to pay for those tools. Did you get it? So yeah, nothing comes free. <laughs> Everything in this world is pre-mediated. So it is always thought of. I want something. And that is what we are talking about. Those who have interested motive. So now Krishna has moved from the topic of the devotee to the one who is with interested motive. So from here another verse starts. So here Krishna is talking to Arjuna. To Arjuna he says, there are lots of people in this world. They have some interested motive. They come to me with a big agenda. I want this, I want that, this is what has to happen. If, I, if this happens then I get this. People come with this idea, you know, that God... Can you please give me a very good rank? And they come and pray to God saying that, please give me a good rank in the class. You know, I want good marks so that I can join the university. And God gives them that. So they, their basic motive is interest in their own self. They are very self-centered people. So here we are talking of those people with interested motive. Now, what do they do? 
they perform actions the people who are with interested motive perform actions see the words so let us say for example you have an interested motive you want to get money you want to get rich so you want dhan dhanya aishwarya all those things dhan money wealth dhanya grains aishwarya is the grandness the the greatness in this world you want to become famous maybe so what do you do you perform certain sacrifices you go to the temple you go to uh, you call people to your house and perform some kind of a vedic sacrifices now this may happen in india abroad do they happen of course they happen there also you will find that if you go to any of these chinese temples they will go inside the temple with a beautiful you know the joysticks and all joysticks means like we call in agarbatti over here they will plant that agarbatti long ones and it will glow for many hours they will plant it outside and then they will do prayers like this like that and then they enter the one in and any other god's temples maybe it's a god of the you know uh, the harvest or whatever the gods that are there you think that doesn't happen in europe even in europe it happens yes there are lots of atheists that are there which have gathered in this world nowadays you think they don't pray ask yourself this question do you really think atheists don't pray they say these words i wish this happens whom are they wishing on they may say i don't believe in any god or anything like that but today i wish my boss is very nice to me you know a girl may think you know when she is uh, she she's trying to get a date she's thinking i wish this handsome guy replies to me when they go on a date okay and then what happens they take down the numbers of each other i will talk to you i'll call you i will send you a message i'll ping you and they are hoping hoping they are wishing they are wishing that the handsome guy or the beautiful girl gets back to me isn't that a wish isn't that what we call as an interested motive the fellow is an atheist he doesn't believe in any god for that matter but every minute of the day he is just wishing for something either he wishes that his boss dies because the boss is the useless fellow <laughs> or he wishes like you know the fellow who went to uh, turkey huh so he had a he had a wife and he is taking a selfie with his wife and he pushed his wife over the cliff and the poor thing died she was heavily pregnant and then he came back and he said to the world oh i think my wife fell off from the cliff and they got a video where they show how he is pushing his wife to death interested motive those who live in this world all have interested motives whether you are a believer or a non believer doesn't matter everybody has some interested motive in their world so there are those who perform action with some interested motive as laid down in the three vedas as laid down in the three vedas the framework has been designed by me remember in the previous words i told you very clearly i am this three vedas you think these words are not me so what do they do they twist the words they are going to use the same words of the vedas the literal sense in it they will look at the line and in the line it is mentioned very clearly perform this yagya and you will get money and power and fame and fortune it is written in the vedas 
every scripture it is mentioned. People are beggars at the end of the day. See, they read scriptures and things like that with a clear motive that they want something out of it. And the Vedas are the same. It is mentioned over there, though it is written, I told you, all the scriptures that are there, they are actually codices. It is not open knowledge to anybody. Only Krishna himself can maybe decode all those things. Nobody else has got the right to decode them. So they take these words in the literal sense. And they say that, okay, it is written in the Vedas, as laid down in the Vedas. All these laws and they are written down over there. And drink the sap of the Soma plant. <laughs> no, Soma plant. Soma plant is an intoxicating plant, by the way. Hmm? If you drink the Soma juice, no, you get intoxicated. Full day Indra is intoxicated with the Soma juice. I should not call it juice, it's a liquor. Hmm? It's like a wine. So you are totally zonked. <laughs> you see the word zonked. So he's totally drunk. So in the, in the verse it is written. In the Vedas it is written. You know, drink the Soma juice. Now everybody thinks that, oh, it is written over there. I have to drink it. So what does that juice do? It intoxicates you. And thus have been purged of sin. So while I am doing these actions, I am going to be rid of all the sins. See, I will first do the verse and then I will tell you what is the true meaning of the verse. Okay, But I am just telling you how these people, the ones who are called the ignorant folks of this world, how do they actually treat it? Now, I was talking about this boy and the girl going on a date. So they have the dating manual. You see, in the dating manual it is written, Hello, how are you? They are sitting across the table, you know. They are ordering something. And in that order they will say, Will you have a glass of wine? They do. That is the Soma juice. It intoxicates a person. And it leads us to the further thing. It is nothing but giving an impetus to move to the next step. They say the next step and the next step and the next step. Finally they end up in the bedroom, isn't it? How many movies you might have seen or serials where this is the same thing shown? So think about it, like that it is. It is written in the manuals. So you do that. And now you may think that this happens only in America. Very sorry, sir. It happens across the world. The largest users of these apps are in Brazil. Do you know that? They are there in Brazil. The Europeans use their apps. You think the Europeans don't have apps? They also use it. You think the Asians don't use the Asians are very much ahead in the game. The largest number of users in India are there. They have got hundreds of apps. And all these people who are, who are there, they are definitely doing all that. And they think it's a rule like that. Oh, oh. And so they follow the trend. And they follow the trend and there it is written. Yes, you can have this Soma juice. And this having been purged of sin, when you drink the Soma juice, what happens? You lose all your senses, by the way. Hmm? Then there is no idea of knowing whether you are doing the good thing or the bad thing. Do you know that? Once you are completely intoxicated, you have no clue what you are doing. It's same like taking drugs. After you take drugs, you go in that completely different state of mind. You don't know what you're doing. So this, they think that there is no sin, you know. I'm not doing anything wrong, see. So the material worldly people also do the same thing. The material worldly people who do the work with an interested motive. 
The interested motives are there. You see, I have agents in my world also. You know what agents are? You see, if you want to buy a house or if you want to rent a house, you go to an estate agent, isn't it? Huh? You go to the estate agent and you say, Sir, I want this kind of a house, you know, on rent or maybe I want to buy it. And the agency fellow searches for the house. Like that, all the Tinder, Binder and all that, they are the same thing, they are agencies. Like that, in my world also, I have agents. People, what they do is, they will come and tell me in my ear, they will say, you know, you know, I'm very sorry to tell you, Guruji, but my mother is very sick. You know, she has got all the problems in the world. Can you please take care of her? And there are other people who will say, Oh, this girl doesn't get married. Oh, that boy is trying to do this. And the, this one is doing that. And that one is doing that. I don't have a house. I don't have money. I don't have this. They all come with all the grievances. It's all interested motive. That is what he says. Now, people with interested motive, they are the ones. They have some interest in their heart. Ah, I am doing, I don't have those interests, you know. I am doing it for somebody else. That is why I call them agents. These agents will come to me and they will tell me, you know, they can't come and approach you. That is why we are coming. So they have these agents in between who will come and approach me for somebody else. Huh? They are the intermediary. They are also the same. Interested motive. So what do they do? They have thus purged of the sin. They think by telling me, or by doing the rituals in the form of the Vedas, the ceremonies that they do, now I am free of all the problems that are there. And then what happens? Seek access to heaven. Worshipping me through sacrifices. Then they will come and worship. And they will say, Krishna, I worship you. You are such a great person. But with that interest in their heart, they worship. See, they have that mean streak in them that they have something going on in their mind when they come and talk. But when you ask them, oh, you are looking for this. No, I was not looking for it, you know. I was just thinking, finally, end of the day, where do I go? You are the only one over there. So they will come to Krishna like this and they will say like this to Krishna. But everything is interested motive only. And that is what they do. And they worshipping me through sacrifices. They will say, you know, oh Krishna, I will do this for you, I'll do that for you. And they will worship gods and Krishna and in all their sacrifices they will do. They will say, I'll offer you this. Situation, we come back to this girl and the boy who have met over there. Hmm? So when they do all those things, they're sitting in the restaurant and they're talking to each other and after that they will say, can I walk you down to your house over there, wherever the hell that house is. And while they are walking down, they will say, will you have a cup of coffee? Just now you had a big fat meal over there. And now you want to have a coffee, a nightcap or something, some little drink. After sozzling yourself in that bar or whichever place, you still want to have a li little liquor? Ayo, yo, yo. What kind of stupidity is that? Actually, that's nothing like liquor. Okay. Already they are already drunk. So now what they are looking for is more than that. So, most of the people don't even know what they are up to. Their lust is at the peak. And the lust is at the peak. Remember, they have taken the Soma juice. Soma juice, you know. The Soma juice increases the lust quite a lot. And because their lust is growing, so the, what they do, they are thinking of sacrifices. Sacrificing what? Do you remember the words that I use? Sacrifice means what? Eating food, putting it in the mouth is called a sacrifice. Right? The food entering the stomach is called a sacrifice. Krishna says in all this, I am the sacrifice. I am the words that, the thing that you pour inside, the one who is doing it, the words that you say, everything is the sacrifice. 
So don't you think the lust is a sacrifice also? These people, they end up doing some action. Hmm? That is also a sacrifice. And that sacrifice happens. They seek access to heaven. With that sacrifice, they want to achieve the heavens. <gasps> oh, I have achieved the heavens. They love to get into the heavens. Attaining Indra's paradise is the result of their virtuous deed. Indra's paradise. Did I not tell you Indra is the most intoxicated of the gods? Full day he is drunk. And they enjoy the celestial pleasures of God in heaven. So they enjoy the pleasures of the gods in heaven. Now all this sounds very nice, you know, very, very artistic. It sounds very beautiful. Let me come down to the hard tracks over here. All this is not happening outside. It is happening inside of you as well. When there are interested motives in this world, all interested motives, I want to get married, I want a good job, I want money, I want this, I want that, everything. Plus your mouth wants a better taste, your eyes want to see beautiful things, hmm? your body wants to experience the ecstasy. These are interested motives. And if your life is only full of these interested motives, you know, the interested motive is also, I want to make my parents happy. That is an interested motive. I am getting married because my parents have to be happy. That is called an interested motive. What is going to happen after that? All that I mentioned in the Tinder and downwards, no? That is going to happen. They are going to satisfy their baser needs. So if the interest in motive is for something, I not for me, you know, I am not asking for myself, I am asking for another person. Even if you are asking for another person, it is still called an interested motive. You may ask for your mother, father, brother, sister, uncle, aunt, your own husband, your own wife, doesn't matter, it is still called an interested motive. When you have any interested motive, you are still going to go through this whole thing. You will show me the rule book and say, this is written in the Vedas, you know. It's like I, I write these updates also. In that I say, you know, you have to be nicely dressed. Okay. If you, are, if you want a nice chicken also, you dress the chicken nicely, isn't it? You are like the chicken. You are dressing very nicely. And when you dress nicely, that is what is written in the Vedas. You want a good job? Go dressed very nicely. If you want to hook that girl or that boy, dress very nicely. So following this rule book, following the rule book and then drinking the Soma juice. So in your body, this is what happens. Your mind is the main culprit. It has got a motive. It says, I want to enjoy something. And when it wants to enjoy something, it goes to the brain. And in the brain, there are intoxicating chemicals there. All those hormones are there. They are the Soma juice. Very lovely. So a little bit of the drink of the soma juice, the brain releases those hormones, those exciting hormones. Or you want to get angry, other deadly hormones are released. And when they are released in your body, this is what happens. So they are drinking the sap of the soma plant and thus having purged of the sin. Sin means all the wrong activity that is there, it is removing it out. So if you want pleasure, all the pains that are there, go away. You know, that happens. You may have a stinking headache before, but now you have met your girlfriend, and now you are going to have a romp. 
all that headache is also gone because those those things are surging through your brain they are going to different parts of the body so these different parts of the body are getting excited so what do they do they remove the sin sinful thing is the wrong thing so when you want to enjoy something all the bad stuff is removed and when you want to get angry all the good stuff is removed see so much juice is being drunk all the adrenaline is flowing through your body mm, like that and when the adrenaline flows through you what happens all the good stuff that is there you may remember about that person is going into the gutters all the sins are removed and then worshiping me through sacrifices what sacrifices are we talking about did i not tell you what sacrifices happen the sacrifices happen from different parts of the body yes the actions happen and those actions are very pleasurable or they are very deadly you see the pleasurable actions are whatever that you do i can't name them okay i you have to understand and the deadly actions you can slap a person you can get angry with the person you can throw a tantrum you can throw the vessels at that person you can tell them i'll kill you you can say all those kind of bad words when all that anger in you is rising the adrenaline flow is coming very strong all the good stuff is gone out into the gutters no i told you both sides i told you good stuff and bad stuff that is indra only end of the day indra indra's heaven you are going to go to seek access to heaven indra's heaven indra's heaven is a very beautiful place so there you will get the access to heaven it's all about intoxication and enjoyment so the mind enjoys this pleasurable activity or the mind enjoys all this terrible activity you may take a knife and kill did i not tell you about this man who pushed his wife ha huh? and killed her and the child that was there in her because he didn't want her he threw her from the cliff in istanbul or somewhere in turkey i don't care wherever it is and that is the pleasure that he got his mind got the pleasure now i got rid of my wife see so those who get angry the pleasure that they get is because of anger they are able to there are people who will cut their skin up like that or they will say i will commit suicide no i will get out of this house i'll go away somewhere or you get out of this house they say this kind of words because that is indra enjoying all the mind is enjoying all that the torture also it enjoys and the pleasure also it enjoys as a result of their virtuous deed whatever deed that they are doing they enjoy the celestial pleasures of the god in heaven whichever god that they are trying to propitiate that god they are enjoying here what god are we talking about here we are talking about indra dev and all the other demi gods that are there the demi gods are also they can be called demi devils also <laughs> demi urges they are there so they are enjoying all these demons inside your body are enjoying just like the gods are enjoying so we have come to the end of verse 20 we will stop over here but we will be continuing with this nice beautiful story of ours how you love this kind of a thing at the end of the day it is still a motivated action krishna is not there in these actions i am sorry people will come and bow down at krishna's feet but krishna doesn't support any of these actions that we will come to know in the coming week because i think tomorrow uh, tomorrow i think we have another satsang uddhav gita huh so tomorrow we will have the uddhav gita and saturday sunday uddhav gita and monday also then we will join on tuesday on this see you all take care have a great evening bye